Hello friends, uh, my name is Kunal Doshi and uh, by qualification I am Chartered Financial Analyst from uh, US University uh, CFA Institute USA and I have also done my CFA from ICFA Hyderabad. So uh, directly beginning to the topic today we will start with the concept of mergers and acquisitions. M and A, together is what we say this word, why merger and why acquisition. A lot of theories or a lot of documents that you will read during your course of MNA, you will find both segregated, merger segregated alone and acquisition segregated alone. Of course, uh, theoretically they both are different, but industry says that together, MNA, MNA activity. Now, when I say merger, uh, rather than directly going into the theory, let me say merger typically is marriage. Marriage uh, in heaven, which heaven? Corporate heaven. So when we say about marriage, what marriage means? Marriage means two people coming together, perhaps you know, with a vision of going forward in their relationship, and a lot of activities that they, you know, perhaps uh, feel that they can do together better. So what about mar uh, mergers? Mergers are basically when two companies, two firms combine together. They combine together with the intention of drawing up some synergies. What exactly synergies will go into the detail of that, or perhaps some advantage that they individually cannot feel, you know, they can achieve that. So, when it comes to merger and acquisition, let me now get into the theoretical background. What merger theoretically means? It means when two entities come together and form up a new entity altogether, that is called merger. So, in an example point of view, when JP Morgan and Chase combine their activities together, the new entity is known as J.P. Morgan Chase. So that particular thing is called a merger. Similarly, when Glaxo and Smithline combine together, the combined entity Glaxo Smithline is a merger. When it comes to acquisition, acquisition is when one entity acquires a stake, whether that is a minority stake or a majority stake, in the target form. By target form, I mean the one that is acquired. So when an acquiring company, you know, acquires a stake, when one company acquires a stake in a target entity, a small stake, a minority stake or a major stake or a complete takeover, that perhaps is called acquisition. So when in an Indian online retail space, if I would to say Alibaba acquired a uh, small stake in snapdeal.com, that particular thing is called acquisition, alright, that stake can go from 10 percent to 20 percent to 30 percent or anything that is called acquisition. So mergers and acquisitions, merger basically means two firm coming together, acquisition is one firm acquiring the another firm. So now when we have started and understood what is merger, what is acquisition, a small difference between both, again I will conclude merger is two entity coming together to form one third entity, acquisition is one firm acquiring the another firm. So that can perhaps be possible when one firm acquires the other firm, it can retain the brand, it can uh, you know let the individual identity of that particular company preserve. So when we have understood what is merger and acquisition, let us now come to the point, what are different types of mergers and acquisitions. Again if you would note, I am utilizing both the words simultaneously, merger and acquisition because the industry, industry uh, perhaps uh, tells it together, M and A. There is not a huge bifurcation between that. The industry perhaps does not believe in that. So uh, different types of MNAs, there are five different types uh, and many more, but we will confine ourselves to those five different types of MNA. The first one being horizontal merger. Horizontal by horizontal I mean a line in this form. So when two entities, let us understand this horizontal merger, when two entities in the same industry and in the same stage combined together, that merger is called horizontal merger. I will repeat, when two industries, uh, when two companies in the same industry and at the same stage combined together, that is called a horizontal merger. Example when Flipkart last year acquired Mintra, they both are into online retail space, they both are selling goods on their portal, that particular merger is a horizontal merger. The reason, the reason is perhaps increase in market share, the reason perhaps is in consolidation of activities, creating synergies, reducing cost, 
surviving from the fierce competition that is one of the biggest reason of horizontal merger. So, an example Flipkart acquiring Mintra is a horizontal merger. Tomorrow, if I would say uh, Motorola and Lenovo coming together, that is a horizontal merger. So, various different types of mergers in the industry. Then comes the second part, vertical merger. Now, this is interesting, vertical means a straight line. Your vertical merger itself has two bifurcation. One is a forward merger or forward integration. The second one is called a backward integration. Now, understand this carefully. Suppose, we will take up an example, wherein there is a company called Tata Motors. Now, Tata Motors is into the manufacturing of vehicles. Now, with the acquisition of JLR, it makes vehicles from nano, a 1 lakh rupee vehicle to Jaguar, a 1 CR vehicle. So, Tata is into the multiple range of vehicles, basically into the manufacturing and production of vehicles. <coughs> so, now what Tata motor requires to make vehicles, a lot of materials, engines, gears, tires and even steel and all. So, what if Tata motor acquires one of its suppliers in its value chain? Suppliers, there are multiple suppliers, will focus to one supplier, the one who supplies steel, that is Tata steel, assuming. So, now suppose if Tata motor acquires this company in the same industry, but perhaps at a different stage of value chain, that merger is called vertical merger. Now, as I said in vertical merger, there are two parts, forward as well as backward. So, in vertical merger, especially in backward merger, when Tata motor acquires someone who is supplying it, that particular merger is called a backward merger. It is like going more below the value chain, more down in the, more deep into the value chain. This was a case during the 60s and 80s when Reliance Industries, which manufactured polys, uh, which manufactured polysters, it went into the detail to the manufacturing and to the exploration of, you know, carbon crudes and it went into, you know, crude refinery, ultimately ending up into oil exploration. So, that is what Reliance was. Now, similarly, the another stage of vertical merger, the forward merger of forward integration. Here, suppose if the same Tata Motors goes ahead and acquires, now once its product is finished, it goes ahead and does what? It sells that to the retailers, sells that, that to the showroom owners and the showroom owners then perhaps sell it by providing a lot of facility, a customer service facility, including self-financing, including financing to buy that vehicle. So, now what? There is another company called Tata Motor Finance. There is another company called Tata Motor Finance or Tata Capital, to be precise, just taking an example. So, what if Tata Finance goes ahead and, you know, it is being acquired or merged with Tata Motors? What has Tata Motors done? Tata Motors has acquired one entity which is closer to its customer, upward in the supply chain, more closer to the customer. That particular merger is called forward integration under vertical merger. So, when we said horizontal merger, it is between the same industry and at the same stage. Vertical merger is in the same industry, but at different stages. When you go below the chain, going close to your suppliers, that is backward integration. When you go above the chain that is close to the customer, that is a forward integration or a forward merger. Similarly, in today's online retail space, if I were to give an example, now what if Flipkart acquires, now test this yourself, what if Flipkart acquires logistic company named eCart, although it is its own subsidiary. If Flipkart acquires a logistic company, will that come to a forward or a backward merger? It is more close to the customer. The logistic company is the one who delivers it to the customer. Yes, so it is forward merger. But what if Flipkart acquires or merges with the people who are selling goods on its portal? For example, Lenovo is selling goods on Flipkart or Motorola is selling goods on Flipkart. So, that particular merger when you are going below the value chain, that particular merger is called a backward integration. So, two different types of merger, horizontal and vertical. Let us come to the third and important merger that is conglomerate. This is a merger where two firms come together, but they are unrelated in their business. 
their business are completely interrelated. What can be the reason here? The reason here is diversification from their activities. A lot of firms find themselves saturated in that business and then they divert themselves into a business altogether new so that they can leverage from the new generation business. A lot of companies have been doing it. A lot of individual entrepreneurs who have sold a huge stake in their companies go ahead and acquire something else. For example, Sun Pharma, which is a pharmaceutical giant by Dilip Sangvi, one of the richest persons in India, went ahead and acquired a power company, Suzlon. It merged itself or it merged Suzlon's activities with itself. So when Sun Pharma, going by that example, if Sun Pharma, which is into pharmaceuticals, merges with a power company, that is Suzlon, that particular merger has no relationship, no synergies, no strategic advantage. That merger is called conglomerate merger. The reason is diversification. A lot of companies do that thing in today's generation. So, one particular company which has no relation with another company can acquire it if it sees an opportunity in that particular company. So, conglomerate are mergers of unrelated business. They both are related, horizontal, vertical, conglomerate, unrelated businesses. Right? So, then come, we come to the fourth merger that is congeneric merger. Now, congeneric mergers are very much similar to horizontal and vertical mergers wherein they are extension of activities. Extension of activities in the same industry but at an extension stage. So, recently in 2015 when Dell, a computer making, a PC making company acquired EMC an online data storage company. That was perhaps an extension of Dell's activities. That merger is called congeneric merger. You go a stage higher in the product that you are. And so, congeneric mergers are the one wherein you get market advantages, technological extensions, a lot of other extensions, strategical extensions into your same product. Those mergers are called congeneric mergers. We have a lot of examples about on generic mergers. For example, when Citibank acquired travelers insurance, now Citibank was into the banking business, acquiring an insurance business, that is a con generic merger. Where LNT Finance went ahead and acquired Fidelity Mutual Funds, getting itself into the mutual fund industry also, which is also related to the finance segment. So, that particular is a con generic merger. And finally, the last merger that we are going to do is reverse merger. Now, these are interesting mergers. What happens here is a large private entity acquires a public entity. The reason? The reason is to get access to IPO markets. Second, big reason is that at times the brand value of that small entity has become much bigger and large company goes ahead and, goes ahead and acquires it or a small company acquires a large entity. So, basically it does happen in a way in case of a lot of subsidiaries. For example, in 2002, ICICI Bank was being acquired by ICICI. Now, ICICI Bank was much bigger and a listed company and ICICI, the parent company acquired that particular company. So, it is a reverse merger. Basically, reverse merger concludes a small company acquiring a large company or a private company acquiring a publicly listed company so that you get access to IPO markets, right? Those are the particular different types of mergers. So, we understood about the meaning of merger, the types of merger. Now, let me give you an industry overview about merger. Till 2014, MNA activities suddenly saw a huge surge after 2007, which was the peak of MNA activities. Around 48 billion dollars of merger happened especially in the Indian space, wherein the biggest players were Citibank, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, they were the ones who did the highest mergers. A lot of uh, huge mergers happened off late in 2015, as I reflected here, Delhi MC, a 67 billion dollar merger. In India, you had, uh, you had Sun Pharma acquiring Ranbaxy, you had Vodafone SRD, one of the biggest, much before that. Latest in the banking segment, Kotak ING, that is a, a good merger to be, you know, overviewed and, you know, you can perhaps analyze that mergers. The uh, social media space, Facebook acquiring WhatsApp, 
was the biggest merger of last year a much talked about perhaps not only the corporate entities but even a lot of you know youngsters were fascinated by that huge amount of merger you know so facebook acquiring whatsapp in the indian space huge i mean activities are going right small small e tailers coming together merging up activities so mna suddenly saw huge surge of late in today's generation right of course the reasons are not only uh, growth but survival also so when two companies are fighting for a market share by delivering the same product like flipkart and snapdeal and you have the third entrant there amazon we all know no one is going to survive forever by selling discounts by selling goods at discounts by giving cash benefits rewards and all time they'll have to you know do something unique or else it's the same product it's the same platform providing the same product so they may not survive so consolidation is necessary at some point of time they will find it necessary so why is mna required <coughs> mna is also required for one more reason that is an exit route you start up a company you start up a company create a value in it and at some point of time either you retain it forever for your future generation or you sell it by sell it i mean selling there are two routes majorly to sell one is through public selling that is ipo route another is through mn activity you know selling it to another venture we are talking about the another venture that is another route that is mn activity so meaning of mn types of mn the recent activity of mn now let us understand how mergers take place. what are the different ways by which mergers happen similar to marriage what happens in a marriage negotiations Only talks in merger is also the first part by which I would say the different strategies of merger, the different strategies or takeover strategies of merger. The first one being friendly merger or negotiated merger. What happens here is two firms come together, propose that they want to go ahead with the merger, see their activities. come to a decision whether they want to merge or not and it's a very amicable relationship that relationship is called a friendly merger most of the mergers in today's space are friendly negotiated by professionals called investment bankers merchant bankers or mna advisors deal advisors they are the ones who help it negotiate that is not the case of course always and then at times there are hostile mergers when i say friendly negotiated merger the delhi emc merger is a friendly negotiated merger two coming two companies coming together and deciding how they want to go ahead that's a very friendly and amicable merger <coughs> hostile by hostile itself you mean a merger which is not by choice but by compulsion so when one company is trying purposefully to acquire another company even without its consent directly offering you know doing a tender offer by trying to lure its shareholders selling their stake or directly dealing with the shareholders instead of dealing with the management that sort of merger is called a hostile merger around the 60s 70s and 80s mr swaraj paul he had tried doing that by trying to acquire you know two of the biggest uh, indian multinationals uh, indian companies at that time a lot of people may not be aware about this it's a long old story but then he tried acquiring escorts and dcm these were the two motors that he tried acquiring unsuccessfully although so those were very hostile uh, those were you know examples of hostile mergers so friendly merger and an hostile merger that is without consent you also have another uh, you know methods of merger a lot of different methods wherein uh, you uh, you can go ahead and you can do a reverse merger by a reverse or by you know reverse bidding you know reverse bidding is something wherein instead of that company offering you you directly offer them that is reverse bid so in a reverse bid you do a counter offer you do a counter offer uh, to the acquiring firm itself which is trying to acquire you so in this strategy if there is no friendly or negotiated merger then there are two activities one is trying to take it over you know by force but along with that then the target will also try to do some activities some defense activities by which it can avoid that merger 
So, reverse bed is one way. You have poison pill. Now, poison pill by the name itself is it is a pill by which you know you try to destroy or destruct one of the major activities of a firm for which the acquirer is very much keen to buy your company. So, for example, if I am into the hotel business and I have one of the most you know valuable asset of mine in a prime location, I may sell it off I or I may not run it well so that the acquirer does not acquirer does not you know take my company. Of course, this is a more self destruction strategy, but then that is the last resort. You have another strategy is white knight. This is one of the very famous strategies wherein you rope in one of your friends to help to help escort your company from someone who is trying to acquire it. This was a prime example some 5 10 years back when uh, PRS Obroy, the owner of Trident, EIH was being persuaded by East, uh, by ITC to buy up its properties and he didn't wanted to do it all his life he had been fighting with that competitor so what did he do? what did he do he got an uh, reliance owner Mukesh Ambani to buy up his company at the last moment and he sold his company to that particular old friend you know family friend so that he is being saved or you know being safe or defended from activities of a competitor trying to take it over you know in a hostile manner. Many more strategies goes ahead you know golden parachutes wherein the management puts a lot of clauses by which you know if there is a MA activity and in the in then there is a case of you know they being thrown out from the system they perhaps get out with huge bonuses and all. So, these are a lot of activities that happens in the strategies and the different strategies of happening and not happening merger. So, that is one of the you know primary aspect the meaning of merger, the merger and acquisition industry, types of mergers, the different strategies of mergers. This is the very much basics you would require before you start the mergers. Now, this is the theoretical part of merger. Let us understand now that there are also other aspects of merger. Now, when we say we do merger, basically merger is done for the one biggest reason that is synergy. Now, what do I mean by synergy? Synergy is when two firms come together and create something extra. So, when I say A company is valued at 100 crores and B company is also valued at 100 crores, but if they both combine together, their valuation becomes not 200 crores, but Suppose 250 crores. Now, how is that possible? That 50 crores is nothing but synergy. And how is that possible? That is possible by reducing some costs, reducing some competition, increasing some scope and scale both. So, those particular aspects wherein there is a synergy possible, then the merger becomes beneficial. <coughs> so, the biggest reason of merger is getting synergies. Now, all this is fine. I know what is merger now, why do we do mergers? synergy being the major reason. Now, when I go into the details of synergy, there are economies of scale that is relation with more production and reduced cost, scope that is more range of products, diversification also one of the biggest reason of merger go by my spelling by the way. Then, some strategical as well as financial benefits. Now, this is going to be our biggest focus when we will do merger going ahead and we will solve some scale and scope increase, diversification, strategical and financial benefits. These are one of the major reasons of doing MA activities. You know, consolidating, you know, reducing competition, these are the major reasons by which you generate synergies. <coughs> so, now when I have understood what exactly is merger, how it is, you know, activated what is the reason behind mergers and all. Let me now go to the basics of merger for which we are going to do the entire topic and that is who benefits from merger? Who? By I mean who benefits? There are two parties in the merger. One is the acquiring company. Second is the target company. <coughs> so, when the merger happens, 
it can happen in two form or a combination of both the first is that one company gives another company a company gives t company cash and t company's owners don't exist anymore the second possible route is where a company gives t company shares of a company this is where this is where t company's owners get shares in the acquiring firm by giving their own shares in the target firm now when it happens in cash and when it happens in shares we also need to understand that what was the value of the t company that is the target company before merger and at what is the price that we paid them this is where what we understand we understand is what is the value being paid to the target now when it happens in cash it is visible that it was suppose if the target was initially valued at 100 crores and now it is in the merger being paid 125 crores we can understand that 25 crore is the additional cost that i have paid to target and target benefits there acquire loses there what in the case of shares now when the merger happens in shares that is where we need to know the basic and the most important question what is the exchange ratio by exchange ratio i mean what is the ratio at which acquiring company gives shares to the target companies it is not randomly decided it is decided by measuring the value of both the companies individually that is where we will come to the valuation of companies much similar to valuation of equities in fact the same thing <coughs> so now i also need to understand what are the different valuation techniques by which i can form up an exchange ratio and i can understand who benefits or who loses in the merger so in the mna space the last concept the last theory that we need to understand is what are the different valuation parameters there are multiple ways by which someone can value a company one is asset based valuation you value the you know book value of assets the net worth of the company <coughs> the intrinsic value of the company <coughs> and you then you know deal it together by you know acquiring uh, by valuing the acquiring company's assets valuing the target company's assets goodwill valuation all that happens more of an accounting valuation happens for both the firms that is asset based valuation you have earnings based valuations earnings based year you and we together will use dcf techniques discounting cash flow techniques wherein we will value the target by uh, free cash flow dividend profitability methods earnings methods capitalize it by cost of equity or vac that is weighted average cost of capital and value the target at some point of time so that is the another method of you know valuing target companies third you have multiple valuation valuation in the form of multiple that is pe multiple valuations this is rel relative valuations wherein you compare two companies you know one company that is your company with another already listed company and try to gain valuation this is a more relative form of valuation so three different ways of valuating a particular company that is what we will go ahead with. okay so before we going up to value the companies we now understand the reason behind valuing the company the reason is that if only you can value the target company you can put that value in front of the acquiring company's value and then you can sit on the table and decide what is to be paid to acquire that particular company now here the valuation may not be exact or precise because it is lot of based on in fact everything is based on the future forecasted benefits by acquiring the target company but then we need some parameter to understand why the merger has to happen so <clears throat> let us understand after the valuation aspect happens and we come at a derivation of one particular value of the target what has to be done that is where you know we need to come to a conclusion as to how much shares has to be given to the target company in case of cash as i said that it is very much straight forward but even if you see a lot of mergers are not simply cash paid mergers they are mergers through shares through swap of stock or shares so recently when facebook acquired whatsapp it didn't pay the entire 19 billion in cash 
in fact it paid a major chunk of 16 billion almost in stock. So, what did Facebook did? Facebook, what did Facebook do? It particularly went ahead with the merger by giving WhatsApp more than two third of shares. What should have been the basis of shares is valuation. So, we will understand what is the valuation and how the valuation happens of a target company, but how shares exchange. Suppose now when you exchange a particular company shares, the exchange should be based on multiple criteria, individually or on a weighted average of it. We take four criteria. The first criteria is the intrinsic value per share or the book value per share. Here, how can be the exchange ratio calculated? Is the intrinsic value per share of target upon intrinsic value per share of acquiring? Now, let me explain. Suppose if the target that is WhatsApp, it has a book value of hundred dollars, whereas the acquiring company. Facebook has a book value of 1000. So, what will be the exchange here? If I were to calculate the exchange is 1 by 10 or I can say 1 is to 10. Now, how is this being read? It is read as WhatsApp will get one share for every 10 shares. Let me elaborate. WhatsApp will get one share of Facebook for every 10 shares that it has. This is the key. Why? Because Facebook is valued 10 times higher than what? So, it is an apple to apple comparison. Similarly, if the exchange ratio is based on the EPS of both the companies, the target as well as acquiring, there if WhatsApp has an EPS of 50 rupees, Facebook has an EPS of 200 rupees, then the exchange ratio may be different here in this case it being 1 is to 4. That is one share of Facebook for every 4 shares of WhatsApp. This is an exchange ratio. Similarly, it can also be based on market price per share. And fourth, may be a combination like if the acquiring and the target company decide that let the exchange be based on intrinsic value of target and market price of acquiring. That can also be a possible case. So, now when I was about to say market price here being 150 and of the acquiring firm being 1500, again it was 1 is to 10. But had it been 3000? The ratio would have been 1 is to 20. And when I say a combination of both, that is intrinsic value of target being 100 and market price being 3000, it was 1 is to 30. Anything that depends on what depends on both the parties negotiating, both the parties, the, both the management of the companies, you know, coming together and negotiating or dealing or coming to a consensus. So, it can be anything. The exchange ratio, exchange ratio by exchange ratio. We mean the exchange of shares of acquiring company with target company. That exchange ratio can be based on many parameters. The exchange can be based on intrinsic value, it can be based on earnings, it can be based on market value, or maybe a mixture of combination and altogether a weighted average of them might be possible by giving you know 25 percent weight to EPS or book value and giving a 50 percent weight to the market value also a possible method of exchanging the shares. Once you have exchanged the shares, then comes the critical part for which we are going to do this topic is who benefits? What is the impact of merger on both the companies post merger earnings and market value? That is going to be the biggest aspect of we doing this topic of MA. So, what is MA topic going to teach us or what it wants from us? It wants only two things. Major is what should be the exchange ratio in which one company will give shares to another company and for that you will have to value both the companies individually by different valuation parameters. That is part one. Part two, what will be the impact after merger on the respective companies earnings, market price 
and who benefits there? Who benefited from the pre-merger and post-merger aspects? So that is what we are going to deal in the entire topic of family. So in the next session, when we go ahead, what are we going to do is we are going to come up with the actual examples, problems of MNA activity, focusing on two major things is the exchange ratio first and second being who benefits from the merger, the acquiring company or targeting company. Again, the last thing that understand the entire topic of MNA from the angle that it is a marriage between two companies. Who wins, who loses is what we will have to find. Right?